you, you talk about an economy on life support. You say okay. since 08, the financial markets have been on artificial life support. And now the Fed thinks they can just pull the plug without the patient dying. I've seen in under other interviews, you bring up, uh, you know, former Fed chair Ben Bernanke and, and you say it's like a, it's like a joke. He won the Nobel Peace Prize. But yet you 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 I don't want to use the word blame, but I will. You uh, you blame him for basically the, the collapse of the world economy. Do you yes. really feel that the mess we're in today is due to Ben Bernanke or do you feel it felt it started before Bernanke? Well, it started with the invention of, of this monetary system by Paul Warburg when, the, when they came up with the central bank for the United States, uh, and, but that was based on a model of the Bank of England. Uh, so uh, this goes way back. That was the beginning of, of the problems that we've got, borrowing currency into existence by enslaving future generations. Uh, when the Federal Reserve buys a bill note or bond, they're buying cash flow from your future taxes. So it's your future work hours that is backing the currency. Um, the, let me see, what was the uh, question again that? Uh, no, basically I, I was saying like, do you really feel that the, the, the situation we're in today, can, can ben, yeah. Berman, ben Bernanke be blamed a hundred, you know, a thousand yes. percent for it or? If you go was, back to, well, you know, it's, it's, the, the central banking, the way currency is borrowed into existence. But if you go back to Ben Bernanke's 2002 speech, just uh, you know, do an internet search for deflation, making sure it doesn't happen here, and read that speech. Or better yet, I gave a live presentation uh, decoding this speech, I think back in 2015 or 2016, because uh, you know, he uses this central bank uh, language that has a lot of big words in it that are supposed to go over people's heads so they go, wow, that guy's really smart. We better let him run things. Uh, uh, that speech laid out the roadmap for everything that has happened since 2008. It was all there, written and available for anybody in 2002. That is what caused me to, uh, you know, I, that's what caused me to write my first book, Guide to Investing in Gold and Silver, uh, but to research the economy so intensely. And it's a shame that this is titled Gold and Silver because um, uh, people, uh, the, the majority of the books that I sell are going to be sold when gold and silver are already in their blow off top. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to educate people on economics and the, a little bit of the history of uh, money and currency, the difference between money and currency, the difference between price and value. Uh, and uh, it's really important for people to learn as much as they can about the monetary system and the financial system before uh, this next crisis happens. Because everything that they've done, all this currency creation, it warps the economy. It's taking wealth from one sector and giving it to another. The economy gets warped. And the bigger the warping, uh, when it snaps back to equilibrium, the bigger the pain, the more pain we're all going to have because of it. And like I said, there is avoiding it. But yes, it's Ben Bernanke's fault. What we have coming is the Bernanke bust. Let me um, let me say I, I do agree. I feel like yes, you know, gold and silver predominantly in the headline, but the book is is so much more than than metals. It really is. Um, you know, I feel that there's a lot of optimism in the book, right? Like you're not just trying to scare people. You're actually trying to prepare people and say like, look, don't panic. Like you can you can prepare. You can prepare for the crisis. Yes. Um, and, it, and it's just a really good overview of the monetary system. Um, I want to get in a, uh, some, some thoughts on central bank digital currencies. You talk a lot about it in the book, the coming of CBDCs. Um, how, how far away are we from that reality and your thoughts on central bank digital currencies? Uh, I don't know, one, two years, something like that. I actually hope they're a little bit late so that the crisis comes before then because this would be the method for them to get everybody into it, and then you're trapped. Uh, once we're all using central bank digital currencies, they, you know, uh, right now uh, they inflate the currency su supply and they transfer wealth, but if they scare people too much, uh, you can go into other assets. Well, uh, once they've got central bank digital currency, if they don't want you to buy gold, they just won't allow you. The currency won't buy it. The currency is programmable. Uh, they can control uh, almost every aspect of your life once we get on any programmable currency where they can, if they don't like you, they can make it so that you can't spend uh, any currency 
within a five mile radius, you know, a outside of a five mile radius of your home. You, uh, if they don't want you to travel, you won't be able to buy airline tickets or take an Uber or pay for a hotel room. Uh, and once they get you into this, now, uh, I, I should have prepared and had this little bill, but in Taiwan, they came out with a, uh, a, a note that was a temporary note to stimulate the economy. They printed a whole bunch of currency that had an expiration date on it. <laughs> and so as it starts reaching its expiration date, nobody wants to hold it. Velocity picks up, but the value of its, its purchasing power uh, diminishes. Uh, and and uh, they can do, if, if they think they need to stimulate the economy, what they can do is punish you by charging you 10% on your savings. And if you notice your savings vanishing at this amazing rate, you're going to spend it before it vanishes. So they can cause, you know, this is the one area that the Federal Reserve and the currency creators, uh, they don't have direct control over it. That's the emotion of the public is what controls velocity, whether or not you feel good enough to go out and spend. So if they want you to go out and spend, they'll just punish you if you don't. Let's bring this up. Okay, I'm just curious to know if you you have thoughts if there's any correlation between that and everything we're seeing in news from, you know, UFOs being shot down, spy balloons. Is this all part of one big distraction and for what? What's the, what's any feeling of what the game plan is here? What are they trying to do? Um, well, I don't know. You know, the world has changed so much in the last three years that I just find it absolutely unbelievable. And I didn't believe... Uh, evil at this scale existed, and it does, uh, there's a lot of distraction going on. What I would urge people to do, I don't pay attention to all of it all the time. And uh, what I do is I, I try to focus on understanding the system behind it. Uh, and when you are looking at the system and then where the economy is, so the economics, and where the economy currently is, if you can hold all, that's one of the things about this book is I was trying to cram in a very small, easy to read, I mean, it's not a real thick, uh, intimidating, daunting book, and I try and do it in very simple language so that somebody can, if, if you understand how currency is created, the difference between price versus value, uh, uh, some simple economics and the current state of the global economy, and then, you understand the differences between the 70s bull market and today, the uh, vast amounts of currency fl floating around, the paper wealth that is floating around the planet. It is a blizzard of paper, and it'll all try and land on that same tiny pile of uh, gold one day, and that will cause an absolute explosion. It's a wealth transfer that happens uh, from the people that are coming late to the party to the people that got there early. But if you can hold all of these things in your mind at once, you sort of get a painting of, of uh, what the future might be.